Welcome to Real Estate with Ryan. So excited to be with you on a Saturday doing what? Talking real estate, what we love. And we've got a great show for you. I can't tell you how fast the week has gone. Real estate is in full swing. And uh, I've got just a show for you guys. I've done a lot of homework for you. So I hope you're going to love this show. We went back into the archives on this show. And um, today's topic, I think, you you know, maybe it may date you a little bit. Um, but uh, some of my young guys at the office, I said, do y'all know what Sears is? I said, Sears, come on, Ryan. I'm like, I'm not, not that young. So Sears department stores. So if you guys are around, you're familiar with Sears. They sold all kinds of goods, you know, tractors, tools. They're, um, they're bigger than their tools, department stores. And they were all across the country. Not long ago, they closed down. But the Sears department actually sold real estate. And it was called a kit home. And uh, they were built from 1908 to 1940s. And so we're going to talk about how do you identify a Sears kit home? We'll talk about it, a little history about it. It was actually a catalog. So back in the day, um, they had a catalog. And it went out to about 20% of the population. And that is our show today. It's going to be a fun show, a lot of information and uh, some cool stuff. So thank you guys for tuning in to Real Estate with Ryan. As always, my name is Ryan Coleman, owner, founder of Hometown Realty along with my wife, and we uh, thank you for joining in. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Maybe we're streaming live here on social media. Of course, Spotify, iTunes, and Google. Um, Of course, we're on News Talk 98.7, 1 o'clock. You follow us there. Uh, And if you can't catch us there, catch us on the app, along with Talk Radio, 92.3 FM at 11 o'clock. So lots of places to catch Real Estate with Ryan. And your support is much appreciated. You know, I can't tell you how many times I'm meeting a client and just just talking and say, hey, you know, Ryan, I hear you on the radio. I say, oh, you listen? That's good. <laughs> That's always a good thing. I always get always get a lot of people just talking to me about the show and always give me. Um, a lady last week sent me just a really, really long article. A uh, great avid listener and uh, really appreciate that insight and information uh, that you guys send us to. So we send you all the love. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a busy weekend. Before we start the show, we got some congrats, as always. Cedar Lane, 2406 Cedar Lane in Knoxville on the market. Got a contract today, so probably <laughs> the time we air this, it will be gone. But okay, that's how it's going. 691 Spoon Street, vacant lot out there. Great opportunity to build on your forever home. 220 Fox Hollow, we got two lots there in Townsend. Make sure you have an opportunity. Hanani Trail, new building lot there. Some congrats. Kenilworth Lane, North Knoxville, complete remodel. Beautiful property, beautiful property. And uh, the activity was there. Sold way above asking price, multiple offers. Congrats. 169 Upton Road, just got off the phone with my sellers. Congrats on their sale on their property in Sweetwater. Uh, St. John's Drive, Jeff County, congrats. Tamachi Drive, Knoxville. Uh, Mr. Carson, Charles Carson, appreciate your time, my friend. Had pictures, just closed his house. Such a sweet gentleman. Um, been in his house for a while, moving. We're getting him to a condo, and he was kidding with me a little bit. And he said, Ryan, you know, you're not done with me yet. We got to find something else. He goes, uh, he goes, I told you, you're going to earn your keep. I said, you know, we do. So good friend, good friend of mine now. So, so a lot of our clients become good friends. We always say you want to make part of the family. Um, it's so much more at hometown realty than just making a sale. You know, it's about people helping people. And we're just excited to do what we do. Both my team and everybody that works here for with us is the same mindset. You know, we, we enjoy doing what we do. We like helping people. And of course, the real estate market is all over the place. So you never know what you're going to expect, kind of like this show. So hope you enjoy today's show and hope everybody's doing well. Let's talk about a Sears kit home. So you young bucks out there might not even know what Sears is. But as I was saying, opening the store, it's a department store. They sold everything. They're kind of similar now. You say Sears is similar to now. I don't know if you'd say Target but uh, maybe you could use that. Um, I, but I, I don't think Target and Sears are similar. I'm trying to think who would be similar. Let me ponder on that a little bit. But but Sears was big, and he was over there at West Town Mall. Um, they had a big spot. Now Dix is over there. Um, but they had an opportunity that uh, went across the country because before there was the internet, there was what catalogs. You know, back in the day, uh, Christmas time, we used to get these catalogs, and if you're like me, they go through there and start 
circling my toys. Even now, my kids are like, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. I'm like, oh, you want the whole store, do you? Um, but the the catalogs were big. 20% of the population were covering it. And if you think, um, you know, that the kid homes that came in packages, um, but it was it was a great option. You know, Sears actually went into the business and they sold 70,000 kit homes. And in 48 states throughout their mail order modern home program, they had 370 designs that you may not readily see. You know, we were just talking before the show. I'm selling a house in North Knoxville. It was built in the 1900s. I mean, end of 1899 to 1900. And we're like, hey, what if this is a Sears home? And we're going to talk about if you if you maybe have a Sears home or could it be a Sears home, different ways to see that and kind of do a little research, kind of cool stuff. Um, you know, the things about the Sears kit homes is they were shipped via boxcar and they came with a 75 page instruction book. And I said, hey, <laughs> my wife might be in trouble if our new home, if Ryan Coleman had to put it together with a 75 foot 75 page instruction manual. Can you imagine that guys? You know, some of you guys would be right on it. Uh, my house would be, we'd be up the Creek. I'd have to call some of my crew over there to help me because it ain't happened. Um, but it was, it was neat. It was a way that, that the uh, Sears was able to cut costs and pass some of the savings onto the consumer. Um, each kit contained 10,000 to 30,000 pieces of framing members and they marked to facilitate constructions. You know, that's one of the things we were talking about doing a little research about the um, um, kit homes, the Sears kit homes, is they were always close to train stations. Makes sense because they were bust in. Um, they would probably take them 24 to 48 hours to unload all the products. That's a lot of pieces. Many decades later, some of those same markings can help identify a home of a Sears kit home. So if you're wondering whether that adorable little bungalow or a big eaves or even your own house is a kit home, read on for the signs and information that historically significant in a Sears kit home. So cool. Let's see here. Now, the Sears industry, as they were developing, they actually even financed some of the Sears home. So they were the bank. Great Depression came along, as you know, and unfortunately, they had to do some of the foreclosure, and they got out of the business. Um, let's talk about some things to kind of understand on the Sears home that I think is kind of cool. I've actually got one of the um, designs here, and we'll put this up on Real Estate with uh, Ryan. We'll put it on our blog, and, of course, you can find all this information and so much more um, on ryancoleman.org. We'll put it on our website. And this is, uh, of course, everybody on the radio can't see, but this is an example, you know, social media streaming. This is an example of one of the uh, kits and one of the floor plans. And you'll never guess, uh, you never guess what the price would be. So this particular plan is, it's a modern home number 102. And it's for $2,065. Uh, now that's, that's a great deal. <laughs> $2,065. And then you have builds and finishes with upgrades. It'll be $3,000. And it's a 10-room residence. And um, I can't read all this here. It's kind of fine print. But, you know, just looking at kind of the living room was 11 by 16. So pretty decent size. Dining rooms, 11 by 14. Not bad. And kitchens, 10 by 12. So um, not a small house. It's a two-story house. I thought that was pretty neat. And they have all kinds of different floor plans. Um, another one on modern home. It's got the stamp on it for $753. Isn't that pretty cool? That's really neat. We just thought this would be a really great show, guys. Just kind of talk about the Sears homes and um, the construction and the quality of that. You know, they did balloon framing. So if you guys are in construction, uh, they were talking about the balloon framing. And, and basically what that means is wherever there's a, a gap or um, to kind of seam things together, it was nailed so that the construction was fairly easy. Now, we don't balloon frame things now. Um, they said the balloon framing came from, <laughs> don't laugh, in case it could balloon and blow away. <laughs> but they made it for homeowners easily to assemble. Uh, of course, no central air was not then. But then, of course, your plumbing, 
your HVAC down the road as things change all came separate. So pretty cool. Let's see how we can talk about as we kind of veer into the second part of the real estate with Ryan, the construction date. So between 1908 and 1940, it could be a Sears home. You want to check the floor plan, blueprint, size, of course, some other different um, ideas running out of time. But hey, stay with us. we got so much more talking about a Sears kit home here. Real Estate with Ryan, second half coming up. Knoxville and East Tennessee. The region is known for its rolling hills, rivers, and lakes. There's no better place to work, live, or raise a family. Home is where your story begins. Buying or selling your home is a big decision, and you need a real estate team you can trust. I'm Ryan Coleman with Hometown Realty, your hometown experts. Whether you're buying or selling a home, let us develop a winning game plan for you. Hometown Realty is East Tennessee's number one real estate group and a proud sponsor of the Vols. I'm Ryan Coleman with Hometown Realty. The real estate market's changing every day. You need to know your home's value in today's market. Text your home address to 290-2290 for an instant, no obligation home evaluation. That's 865-290-2290. And remember, when you're ready to sell, we have a guaranteed sale program to get you in your next home stress-free. Trust your hometown experts. We've helped thousands of people just like you. All right, we're back at it. Real Estate with Ryan, second half. Got a good show for you guys. We're talking about a Sears home. Are you familiar with a Sears home? Do you know what a Sears kit home is? That's what we're talking about and how to identify it in case you might have one here in Knoxville. Or if you live out of state, could you have lived in a Sears kit home? Could be possible. We'll talk about that and so much more finishing the second half. You guys, as you know, we do this show every week. We talk about real estate here in East Tennessee. And so if we could ever be of service to you, whether you're buying, selling, land, condos, luxury real estate, we're here to help you. It's the best number in real estate, 693 sold. And of course, you're going to find more about this Sears show on my website at ryancoleman.org. So make sure you tune in there and check us out. Do me a favor, guys. Um, we did a little research on an actual Sears um, catalog, and we really couldn't find one particular. Um, so if you guys know where you could find an old Sears catalog, we could purchase one, maybe Amazon or who we can find one. Why don't you message us at the office? Let us know if you know where to find one, cost, maybe share the link to us. That would be very valuable. Uh, we'd love to buy one and just kind of have it at the office. And then maybe we could even do a video on it, we can do a follow up on the show and kind of go through some of the cool plans um, that Sears offered. Uh, that, I thought that would be really something cool. Um, to have as well. Maybe we can digitize the book so we could have it online. So some different ideas like that. So you guys know where we can find an old catalog. Might be antique. Um, if we can find one out there, why don't you DM me and let me know um, so we could pass that on to my team. All right. So let's talk about, as we we're going to the first section of the show, we were talking about how can you identify one? Now, you know, kind of in between break, we were chatting a little bit about that and kind of had a little bit of a culture change in the 1960s, um, a lot of these Sears homes were renovated. And right now they're hard to find. Um, one article said that we saw about 20,000 to 30,000 of those were demoed or renovated. And um, some towns, though still today, you can find the iconic Sears home. A little history about this. You know, Sears was selling the concept of the dream home. It capitalized increasing members of the middle class and the World One veteran who sought to build, to build and live on their own homes, i.e. the American dream, right? Each house styled enjoyed a unique name, such as the Starlight or Crescent, which only increased the appeal. Buyers could request design changes as they wanted, and some even provided the entire blueprints to Sears. Staff then packaged the necessary materials and shipped on loaded cartons across the U.S. to the buyer's address. You know, so it was a pretty big operation, um, kind of tie into that, doing a little research on the show. They had mill works across the area. Um, they were cutting lumber to certain sizes and certain dimensions um, so they could all be, um, be pre-ready. It was saving the consumers a large amount of money. They could pass these savings on in bulk, and um, 
again, targeting our veterans after the war there. So um, that's, that's, you know, some of the plans um, as we progress, as the years go on, what me and Nick were chatting about was they were perceived as more of a inexpensive home. And so maybe as in, in the 60s, they started renovating them, but that really wasn't the case. Um, you know, Sears was, you know, they were in a design by, by themselves because, you know, what kind of the capitalization of the, the Amazon, I say Sears is the Amazon of back in the day. I mean, they had their merchandise with the magazine. So back then there was no internet. Um, so a lot of, you know, the magazine or the book was in 20% of the uh, U.S. population. And so then they just, you know, put in their home magazine. And once the kits arrived, you know, buyers needed land and workers that could kind of help. So if you weren't handy like myself, you know, you could hire somebody for a couple thousand dollars and uh, put this house together or work as a team back in the day. You know, you would, you know, family and friends would get together and, and they would pull together. And, uh, you know, kind of help each other. Crazy concept, right? Just help each other. <laughs> um, but the mail order uh, program um, was Sears and Roebuck. And today the Sears kit home is included um, on the archives. That's where it's at now. But uh, let's, let's we're just dive in this. We've got a lot of different things kind of go through this show. And I want to try to cover as much as I can. You know, we can check on some of that and know if you have a Sears kit home would be the footprint, exterior dimensions, room size. Of course, finding the houses that Sears built 2004 was a, a publication, a uh, general beam that put out. But um, there's certain character characteristics, <laughs> that's tongue tied, columns, um, their columns their brackets and a lot of their framing um, are certain keys that you can find. Um, number four, I think. One of the ways that is best is a molding joint, staircase landings, at odd angles. While framing members were pre-cut, some of the moldings and baseboards were not pre-cut due to the variance in plaster and thickness. That's another thing that the Sears home was doing. They came out later, and they came out with plaster and a certain type of drywall, and then they started doing shingles, asphalt shingles. And so they were passing those savings on to consumers. So there was a lot of different add-ons that the Sears kit was bringing. Um, a lot of the stamped lumber, that was one of the things Nick and I were chatting about before the show, uh, the house that we're selling in North Knoxville, go under the crawl space, look at the stamped lumber, exposed beams in the rafters, in the basement, the crawl space in the attic. It was The lumber was marked on the tall side of the lumber and can be found two, 10 inches from the end. The framing member, um, and if you can't access the basements or attics, you might be able to see the marked lumber by opening the bathtub's plumbing access door. However, not all Sears homes had marked lumber. Well, now they're making it real complicated, Ryan. <laughs> shipping labels, that's another one. Look for shipping labels that can be found on the back of the millwork or moldings, various placements in the basement or the staircase. Uh, staircase. Um, of course, this was, uh, Sears was, uh, Sears was um, located in Chicago, Illinois. Let's see. Now, here's another item, and this makes sense. You can go to your court records, do a title search, um, visit the courthouse, and that the old building permits or the grantor's records from 1911 to 1933, um, because remember, Sears offered mortgages, and you can check the grantor records from about 1915 to 1940 um, to kind of see if you see anything trending there that might indicate that you have a Sears home. Sears stopped offering mortgages after 33, uh, but when the mortgage was paid off, very common in our industry now, they get a release. So it's a mortgage release. So you're going to go back and kind of look in time, look in the title, and, and we have access to that now, um, and look for original building permits. Some locales retain these aged documents, um, and it should say the architect on the building permit, the architect name. And if you see Sears Roebuck, you have a Sears kit home. How cool would that be? I'm going to really do that. I'm really going to go back and look at the house because, you know, we're right near the railroad. Um, we're in Lincoln Park over there. If you guys know where that is in North Knoxville. And, uh, I mean, we're just a couple blocks from, 
the train. So it could be possible, right? Or maybe some of the homes over in that area, in that vicinity, could be a Sears Roebuck home. Check your plumbing fixtures and marks such as R and SR, plumbing, electrical, and heating equipment, which was not included in the basic kit home, but could be purchased separately. They enabled customers to choose good, better, and best quality from the late 1920s to 1940s. Sears plumbing fixtures sometimes were stamped with a R or SR, and they're on the pedestal stink sinks, <laughs> bathroom and kitchen, and they're marked underneath. On bathtubs, it can be found in the lower corner on the side furthest to the tub spout. Got some questions on one of those articles that we've kind of referenced. Um, did the kit homes come with fireplace? If so, where were they placed? Um, they said, yes, many of them do have fireplaces. They were in the living room with a window on each side, typically. And you should be able to find floor plans for the houses that show that. We were talking earlier about the sheetrock. Another clue suggesting that you might have a Sears home is good wall sheet plaster sheetrock. They were four by four sheets with the stamp of Goodwall on the backside. Let's see what else here. Um, were there any Sears kit homes made with redwood? It's a good question. And after 65 years, my Sears childhood home was infested with termites, which destroyed the layer of the hardwood flooring. However, a carpenter friend showed me that the floor was perfectly solid and beams underneath the ceiling beams were redwood. That's from another question article. Hope you've enjoyed the show. It's going quick. Thank you for Real Estate with Ryan every week. We look forward to seeing you next week. Hope to have a great weekend. We'll see you. 